Good morning, it's Tammy with Real Southern Woman. Today is Wednesday, July the 14th. It is just a few days away from our drawing for the winner of the $200 gift card. Not sure if you have entered that, but all you have to do is go on the website and enter for the giveaway. We are giving away a $200 Amazon gift card on the 17th. If you haven't signed up, please do so. Uh, there are many questions and answers, so go to our website and click on that giveaway tab and it'll answer some of your questions. And be sure to read those before you try to enter the giveaway, um, and that would be good. I got quite a few responses back about the cups yesterday. I only had one person so far that says she will pass on the cup, so I have added one more person to the list of the lucky and blessed, I guess we should say blessed. Um, and that last, uh, that name taken off gains Gloria Carter a cup. Gloria, Gloria Carter. If you did not hear your names called out or the names called out for the, the cups that you signed up for in the scripture cups, then listen to yesterday's um, Bible study and I call out all the names at the beginning of it. And so just listen for your name. If you hear the name, I have the email on the top of the post today and yesterday. Send me an email, okay? And I can get those cups out to you. I got some priority mail uh, boxes to send them in. They're pretty doggone big. <laughs> but this is the best they could, that I could get to send the cup in priority. Um and it get to you the fastest and then try to be careful with it. So um, I will be wrapping them in paper and bubble wrap to, to get them in here and out to you. But you should see a package in the mail arrive that looks like this. Now it's a big package and it's not gonna fit in your mailbox. So be sure to um, look for the delivery. I will send you a tracking number, okay? when I send out the cups and uh, you keep up with that tracking number to see when it's coming to your house so that you can get the cup in. All right, I got a gift yesterday. Can you tell? I'm wearing it. <laughs> it is um, kitchen um, dishcloths, not dishcloths, but hand towels. <laughs> I am. Um, it takes me forever for my brain to work. It's so funny because she wrote me the sweetest letter. Um, she comments it with the name Margaret Thomas, but she actually goes by ginger. G uh, Margaret, do you have red hair? Are you a ginger or are you just, that's just your nickname? I'm curious to know. If you're on here this morning, let me know. That's, that is too cute. But anyway, it's so funny. She said, please don't get offended by the dish towels. I bought them when you were still using butter. And look, it's so funny. Um, it says, a recipe without butter is a recipe for disaster. <laughs> of course, I wouldn't get offended, honey. I don't get offended. The day that I went off on everybody, it's so funny. Um, I was just having a bad day and I wanted to reach in there and grab that and then I knew I just want to be who I am you know what I mean I just I just do and sometimes it's hard as a youtuber to do that um, she sent me that one she sent me the dogs are in charge we just live here it's so funny when I was in Cracker Barrel um, a couple of days ago I found a plaque that was on the um, clearance that said the cats are in charge. We just live here. And so I gave it to Amy and Keisha because they both have a cat. We hung curtains in their apartment when I was there. I came through. I stayed two nights with May. And then I came through on the way home uh, to see Amy and to hang her curtains. And I bragged about how easy it was going to be putting up that curtain rod. Uh, oh my gosh, did I miss my husband once I got started? It was not an easy task to do. Um, they had two single windows in the living room, and each of the curtain rods they had bought were four feet apiece. So they looked ridiculous over the window because the window was uh, probably a little under three feet. 
so they couldn't use them. And luckily, Mom, I had picked up a large, long curtain rod from Ollie's outlet. And so I hung it. It, it, it would go up to 102 inches. So let me show you what I've done. It draw me a picture right quick so y'all can see what I did. Mind you, you know, I'm drawing this quick. Okay, so they had two windows like this. So I hung a curtain like this, a rod, all the way across, okay? And um, so then we put the drapes. We had four panels. So we, we hung one here. We hung one here. And we hung two here. Y'all never know what you're going to get when I get on here, do you? So if this makes sense, I'm doing this because I got to tell you something. <laughs> so this is what we did. We hung the rod all the way across both windows, and we had four panels that I got at Ollie's because they're using retro uh, decor in their apartment. So it's a lot of bright reds and, and bright colors, and so they couldn't find bright red anywhere. So I thought, you know what, Ollie's is an outlet. They probably got some red curtains they've had in there forever. And I will get those and bring and bring them to them. And they had picked out some red, but it was more of a blood red. So they loved my bright red. So we hung all the curtains this way. We had four panels. So we put one on each side and then two in the middle like this. Okay. And now what they're going to do is they're going to hang, they have a sign, a car sign, a retro sign, and then what they're going to do is hang, um, they're going to do this. <coughs> Excuse me. So they're going to put their car sign in the middle. It's got bright colors in it they got. And then they're going to put al the album not the album covers because they're on a different wall, but the actual records, they're going to hang them on the wall above the curtains. Don't that look like a 20s decor um, to be 20 again, right? Now, I wouldn't want to go back to 20 knowing what I know, not knowing what I know now, but to go back to 20 as wise as we are now, wouldn't that be amazing to have a 20 year old body and know that you could start up some things over again? Now, I wouldn't want to just completely give up the life. That's not what I'm saying. I'm just saying, wouldn't it be nice to have been 20 and know what you know today? Have the faith that you have the day, the trust in God, and wouldn't have to make so many mistakes because, Lord, have mercy, did I make a bunch of them. Um, so, anyway, I so enjoyed being with my girls, and I enjoyed being with May. I didn't get her curtain rod hung. I forgot. Uh, to pick it up, and but I did get her pantry fixed. I may send y'all some photos of her pantry and her refrigerator. I like to have fell out when I got there and seen how organized it was. It is so funny. I'm going to say this, and I know she watches sometimes, uh, and she has seen a lot of the comments you guys made about her and Angel, and I think it's very encouraging to her, and I thank you for them. Um, but anyway, she wouldn't let me come on and show their rings and do all that. She said she didn't want it to be on social media, okay? So she's just not quite the social uh, butterfly that I am when it comes to social media. I'm not a social butterfly in person um, unless it's a small group. If I'm in a large group, I'm quiet. But if it's a small group, I am pretty extroverted. But anyway, when I got there, May has always been like the most unorganized 
messiest person in the whole planet. But can I say that now she's got her own place and that roommate is moved out. She is just like her mama. You know what she said to me? She said, Mama, I have figured out after having so many roommates and going to so many of my friends' homes that nobody is as clean as and organized as my mama is. So if I'm going to be clean and organized and have a nice place, I'm going to have to be the one that does it. It was so cute to hear her say that. And she had a chart on the refrigerator. I mean, it was just amazing. And I just loved it. Loved it. I thought, yes, honey, honey. I'm so glad I've taught you well. Um, so anyway, I might show some pictures of her uh, little refrigerator and stuff just to show you how good it looked. Um, but anyway, let me get back on my subject. <laughs> my gifts. I got off on my kids for a minute. My gifts. Uh, so she sent me four Farm Fresh um, Warbler and Dogs Are In Charge and a recipe without butter is a recipe for disaster. And I thank you so much, Ginger. You are a sweetheart for sending me such a sweet and thoughtful gift. Um, and I really enjoy opening presents. <laughs> Y'all know I do. I redecorated the shelf in the kitchen when I got home, um, changed it up a little bit, took down the ladies, and I hope y'all like it when I do. I think y'all might have seen it last night in my video. So, I'm trying to think, is there anything I could show y'all? I actually bought some pieces to decorate with and decided not to use them, and Chris has already packed them up in a box, so I can't show them to you. But anyway, that's the show and tell for today, and I thank you for tuning in to Real Southern Woman. We have a wonderful Bible study today, and I hope you're ready for it. Um, I so enjoy uh, getting these cups out to all of you, and you may think, why would she do that? I do it because I love you all, and I want you to know how much I love you. And yes, I did visit a bunch of different stores because that's how much I love y'all. I've got 36 uh, shipments to put together and I will be beaming the whole time I do it because I get to do stuff for the people that love me and I love them back and that's just who I am I just that's just who I am I, I just I just love it um, and I got to thinking this morning Lord have mercy what am I gonna wrap all those cups in and then I happen to think you're not gonna believe this But I have two wonderful things to use. May's roommate that left didn't leave anything, but a, no kidding, but a roll of bubble wrap that's that tall and that big around. Tell me God don't take care of us. It's perfect to wrap our cups in. Absolutely perfect. I was like, May, why do you have that bubble wrap? And she said, out of all the things she left in this apartment, that's what she left. I said, can I have it? And she said, yes. I said, I'm going to wrap all my cups with it. Then I've got this paper that I've never used that is wrapping paper to send shipments. You know, you wrap the box with. But instead, I would use it on the outside of that bubble wrap and wrap it up and tape it up good, put it in the box. And that way, it'll be nice when y'all get it. So I've got a whole roll of this that I can use that I bought probably a year and a half ago. Plenty of it. I am ready. Oops. I've got to talk to my sister because half the time she don't watch these. And um, she needs to know all the orders coming in through PayPal. Uh, they're not cookbooks. <laughs> Anything that's $12 is for you guys and not to mess with them. I, I got to call and tell her that uh, because I'll be shipping them through that. When you pay through the PayPal, it automatically goes into my ship station. It's going to be simple and easy. Now, those of y'all that can't use the PayPal, you can send me a check, of course, and I'll go ahead and send out your cut, but just respond uh, to colloredbellycook at gmail.com. Um, what a wonderful day. Chris has gone fishing, and... Um, I'm getting caught up and I am creating a store on Amazon. Uh, it is so funny. I'm creating a store on Amazon um, that's 
for everything you can think of. Like, it's got the mattresses that we use in it and everything. So what I did is um, we used to have an Amazon store called Collard Valley Cooks. I discontinued that store uh, because it wasn't linked to my original Amazon account. And I opened an influencer store through my original Amazon account. Now, y'all haven't seen it yet, so I may share it today. But what that store has got in it is everything that I've purchased through Amazon um, within the last four years. Everything. Uh, just about everything. So uh, you get to see what we use all the time, what we decorate with, what we use. Um, and I mean, you're going to see incontinence stuff uh, in the health and wellness that I used to use with mama, uh, things that my sister does use with her son that's totally dependent, and just many things that you can think of that we enjoy using, and I think it's good enough to recommend to you guys. So I hope you go and explore in the store. It's got apparel and everything um, that we bought through here for things I bought the kids, computers, electronics i mean you name it it's in there so i hope you enjoy browsing our amazon store when i get it ready i'm not quite ready to launch it but when i do y'all will know what it is um let's see we're gonna start our bible study as i get a sip of coffee and i have not lost one pound in a week because I went down there with the kids, and I must confess, I had donuts. They were so good. I had donuts. What else did I have that was bad for me? Donuts. Oh, and I had a blizzard. I surely did. But I'm still at 211, so I only gained a half a pound, so that's not too bad. And um, if I could just go to the bathroom, I'd lose that. <laughs> I just tell y'all everything. Um, Alice. Alice, it's fine if you can't use the email, honey. A lot of y'all are not real good with email or something's happened to your emails. All you've got to do is mail me a check, okay? Just mail me a check um, to our post office box. That address is on the website um, at the bottom of every page, and just mail a check for $12, and I'll get it out to you. The main thing I needed you to email me for is so I can go ahead and get it wrapped. Make sure you're claiming the cup, okay? So, Alice Miller, I am going to mark you claimed. Alice Miller, you have claimed your cup, okay? And I will put that you're going to pay, uh, I'll mark you paid, and you can just mail me a check, okay? Anybody else that needs to do that, that cannot uh, use their email, my mama never could figure it out. My mama had the hardest time with email. Y'all are not going to believe this. I'm just talking too much this morning, but y'all are not going to believe this, but I had a lady email me the other day. She's 98 years old, 98 years old, emailed me, told me she wanted an iron skillet that was small enough for her to pick up and asked me what I would recommend. I am going down to the thrift store today and getting her one that's broken and good to use, and I'm shipping it to her. So, uh, I need to put that on my to-do list today. Weekly goals. Lose weight is on here. <laughs> oh, let's say mail. Skillet. I was like, I would be happy to buy you a skillet. You're 98 years old wanting to cook. Um, so anyway, and I need to put my dogs, um, while I'm thinking about it, I need to put on their, uh, flea medicine today. Sorry, y'all, but if I don't remember things and write them down, I forget. Are y'all like me or not? Crazy. Alrighty. 
Let's do Bible study. Y'all ready? I love coffee. I do. I'm so glad that the Lord gave us coffee. Mm. There's so many things in this world we can enjoy. And food is one of those, right? And drink. All right. July 14th morning reading. Charles Haddon Spurgeon, uh, a wonderful man of God who has written this uh, back a long, long time ago. I have a link to this Bible study on the post. And I also revise it because a lot of his vocabulary is so complicated. This comes out of Exodus chapter 20, verse 25 in the Old Testament. And it says, if thou lift up thy tool upon it, thou hast polluted it. And what this is referencing is uh, Moses. I believe it was Moses. Let me look before I say the wrong. Yeah, Moses. Uh, Moses was building an altar, okay, to pray to the Lord. And the Lord told him not to use, un, I mean, to use unhewn stones. And what that meant is that they hadn't been um, created by man. Man hadn't touched them or changed them in any way. So they're all in their natural state. So a man couldn't have put his work into the stone okay this is very important because i try to tell y'all all the time that salvation only comes through the blood of jesus christ and there's so many out there and i know that's what you've been taught that it can come to you by some people think they can lose it, and as long as they continually confess, they get it back. Some people believe that baptism, if you're not baptized, that you're not saved. There's so many other things that people add on to salvation. And this is a prime example for you, if you believe in that stuff, to listen closely, okay? Um, God wanted Moses to make sure that he knew that it couldn't have anything to do with a man. Those stones had to be natural, okay? It says, God's altar was to be built of unhewn stones, that no trace of human skill or labor might be seen upon it. Human wisdom delights to trim and arrange the doctrine of the cross into a system more artificial and more well-suited with the corrupt tastes of fallen nature. And what he's saying there is that man, because it just seems like we ought to be able to do something, it has something to do with us, so what can we do for salvation, okay? That he tries and he delights to try to come up with an artificial way. OK, instead of improving the gospel, physical wisdom pollutes it until it becomes another gospel and not the truth of God at all. Now, remember, the gospel is the salvation. The gospel is all about how to be saved, the, the birth, the death, the resurrection of Jesus Christ. OK. All alterations and revisions of the Lord's own word are corruption and pollutions. The proud heart of man is very anxious to have a hand in salvation of the soul before God. Um, and before I before I continue, I'm going to say, have, haven't you ever heard, and, and many will say, that Bill helped save their son or... Um, the name of a pastor saved somebody. Um, that is not the right thing to say because a person never saves anybody. It is a spiritual rebirth that only God, the Holy Spirit, and Jesus Christ has a part in. It says, um, but man is very anxious to have a hand in salvation of the soul before God. Preparations for Christ are dreamed of. 
They dream about it. Humblings and repentings are trusted in. People trust that if they're humble and they repent, that it's something that they are, they're trusting in for salvation. To continue to do that over and over. Good works are praised publicly. All these wonderful things that people do for God, all these wonderful things that people are doing in the church, they are praised publicly. Uh, natural ability is much admired. And by all means, the attempt is made to lift up human tools upon the divine altar. If sinners would remember that their carnal confidences only pollute and dishonor the Savior's work, and are so far from perfecting it. So he's telling us that we're polluting and dishonoring Christ by adding anything to what he's done, by praising the works of others, even if it is in the church. And I remember um, years ago when I was working in the church, we went to a really large church. And the pastor never recognized the teachers and the people who were working in the church. And sometimes I would think, you know, um, they really uh, would be encouraged if he recognized what they're doing. But in reality, um, according to this, it's not something that we should be recognized for. Um because it might make us confident and uh, think that our works were um, bigger and more important than they really are. I'm not saying that you shouldn't work for God. That's not what I'm saying. But I'm saying that you shouldn't be proud and boast about it. Okay. Um, so it, it's, it's a fine line whether or not you believe you should be praised. You shouldn't be praised anytime, but but it wouldn't hurt every once in a while for somebody to pat you on the back and say, thank you. I don't think there's anything wrong with that, but I really don't think that calling out, calling them out in front of the whole congregation may not be the smartest thing either because you don't want somebody to get proud about something, even if it is cooking a cake. Uh, now, I have had him do that to me. Oh my gosh. Miss Nichols made me the best banana pudding I've ever tasted, blah, blah, blah. And even stuff like that makes us, and I'm not going to lie, it makes us boast, you know. And I was, I would boast if the preacher said that to me. And then really I shouldn't be, you know. Um, so y'all can agree to disagree there, but I'm just showing you um, how you have to be careful, okay. The Lord alone must be exalted in the work of atonement. Amen. Not a single mark of a man's chisel or hammer will be endured. Now, this is talking about salvation, not about working and necessarily working. But I, I was just using that as an example. Sorry, y'all. My phone's ringing. I don't know who it is. Um, let me. It's my Amy. Let me tell her that I'm on here and I'll, I'll be right back with her. Honey, I'm live doing Bible study. Can I call you right back? Okay, well, it won't take long. I'll call you back, sweetie. All right, love you. Okay. Um, there is an inherent blasphemy in seeking to add to what Christ Jesus in his dying moments declared to be finished. Amen and amen goes right there. Jesus in his dying moments um, declared that the job was done, that it is finished. How in the world could we improve on that which the Lord Jehovah finds perfect satisfaction? How? We personally cannot. No matter what we think, we need to do, no matter what we've been told that we need to do, Jesus said, it is finished. Trembling sinner, if you're a sinner and you've never accepted Jesus Christ as your Savior and you've been told about all these different things that you need to do, 
um, even the sinner's prayer, remember away with thy tools and fall upon the knees in humble supplication and accept the Lord Jesus to be the altar of thine atonement, your salvation, and rest in him alone. In him alone. There's no prayer. There's no baptism. There's no sprinkling. There's no works. Only Jesus Christ's blood that was shed on that altar covers your sin. And um, him alone. Many professors, this is teachers of the word, may take warning from this morning's text as to the doctrines which they believe. There is among Christians far too much inclination to smooth out and repair the truths of salvation. This is a form of disrespect and unbelief. Let us strive against it and receive truth as we find it, rejoicing that the doctrines of the word are unhewn stones and so are all the more fit to build an altar for the Lord. So if you have a stone that you think has anything to do with you for atonement, salvation, throw it out. It has to be an unhewn stone. It has to be just Jesus. Jesus Christ and him alone finished the work. I hope this finds you blessed today. I hope and pray that you have accepted Jesus Christ as your Savior. And um, I hope that you guys, all of you that have accepted Jesus Christ as your Savior, will pray for those listening today that have not trusted Jesus Christ. Because He is it. It's finished. As long as you believe that He was born a virgin, that He was actually God and came and was born in a vir from a virgin, as the scripture says, he was raised as Jesus Christ on this earth by his mother and father. He walked and taught in the temple. He died, was hung on a cross. He was raised again by the Holy Spirit and shed his blood for our sin. Then you believe, that's all you have to believe. And if the Holy Spirit is tugging at your heart and saying, that's you, that's you, come to me. All you got to do is come to me. All you have to do is trust him. Trust that it happened. Believe it. You don't have to understand everything because it's, it's spiritual. And when you're lost, you're not real spiritual yet. Okay, it's hard to be spiritual when you're lost and you haven't accepted Jesus Christ as your Savior. But God gives you the grace and the mercy and gives the Holy Spirit to you to show you that's where you are and that you need the Holy, that you need a Holy God to cover your sin. Then you're saved. That's it. That's all there is to it. You don't need anybody else. Nobody else. All you need is Jesus Christ and you and you alone. And that is it. No preacher, no teacher, no, no prayer. I mean, it's, it's him and him alone. And so many of us want to do something for salvation. So I hope that finds you well. And I hope that you come to know Jesus Christ as your Savior today, if you haven't already, because he loves you so much that he died for you. And when he did it, it was finished. Um, I thank you so much for watching Real Southern Woman and being a part of this Bible study. I do love you very much and I pray for you and, and I hope you pray for us as well. Please keep each other in your prayers. Um, always, always when you go to bed or when you rise up, uh, give the Lord praise and glory and remember our group, okay? For he knows the needs of each and every one of us. And um, that could be your prayer. All right. Let's go to the Lord in prayer today. Dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you so much. We thank you for living here on the earth during the age of grace, Lord. We, we're so thankful that we weren't here during this period in the Old Testament 
when we had to go to an altar of unhewn stones and we had to sacrifice animals and do different things to obtain salvation and it was only temporary for a little while lord and we're just thankful that you sent your son uh, jesus christ uh, to pay our sin debt um, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever would believe in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. And we thank you so much. Nothing is more important than us believing in salvation and believing your word is true and real and trusting in you um, and our sin is covered. Um, we just thank you for that. We thank you for um, this group who comes together every day, Lord, to lift each other up, to love on each other and encourage each other. And we just thank you so much for our big family on Real Southern Woman. We are all a family and a family of God. And we just thank you so much for that. Uh, be with each and every one who are listening. May you be with uh, their um, day as they go throughout today. Help them um, overcome the temptations that they are faced with. Uh, keep them safe in your loving arms and their families and friends as well. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Y'all have a wonderful and blessed day. I'm calling my daughter. My sister says, you better enjoy talking to them kids while you got them. And, I'm, I, and I really do. Her daughter has grown up and she uh, takes care of a uh, coffee shop. And she's her and her, her and her, well, her sweetheart manage it. And she never has time for her mama. And uh, so my sister tells me all the time that I need to enjoy them calling me. Because once they grow up and get their own lives, they may not call me uh, every day anymore. So. Um, let me call her. I'll talk to y'all later. Love you. Thanks for watching.